How would a Thierry Henry in his prime fare in today's game? I would have loved to play against those islands. When I arrived in, in England, the first five tackles, they were for free. Now, that's a yellow. That's a yellow against me after five minutes. Trouble. I would have enjoyed that. <laughs> The word legend gets bandied around way too often nowadays, and I am probably one of those guys who says it a little bit too much. However, the person I'm meeting today is an absolute legend. World Cup, European champion, FA Cup, Premier League, La Liga, Copa del Rey, you name it, the list goes on. However, he has only ever scored past me just the once. I don't even think he'll probably remember it. Come on, let's meet him. Super Thierry Henry. How are you, big man? I'm good, you're mate. Good? How are you? You okay? Yeah, not bad, not bad. As nice houses these are, mate. Uh, what are you here for today? Do you know what you're doing, by the way? I'm here to do a night for Amazon. Have you got time to have like a little brewski, a little cup of tea or a coffee or something? I'm more of a coffee guy. I know it might hurt you because I know you like your cup of I'll tea. I'll make right? you a coffee though, mate. Don't you worry about it, all right? Okay, let's go. Let's go. After you. Door is shut. Oh, I see the door. <laughs> Give it a knock. <laughs> Thierry, open. Keep banging. Somebody open it. I think we use that anyway. That was gold. <laughs> That's actually what happened at my house also when I'm not around. They changed the lock. <laughs> let's see how good your coffee is going to be. You sure I can't tempt you into having a cup of tea? No. Uh, English breakfast tea? Let's get a coffee. I had so many, to be fair, but um, I prefer coffee. I'm a yeah, coffee surely, guy. surely you had a few cups of teas in your time, yeah. More than a, than a few, trust me. Sometimes. Do you have it with milk though? Because I know a lot. No, of no. Black tea. I will have black tea. No, you know what? I had it with milk because if you go to someone in England, anywhere, they don't even ask you. That needs to go in there. Into where? Into the yeah, and then you, and then you. But you can always. <laughs> That's not instant granules. No. That's why he was a goalkeeper. <laughs> This is the goal. Do you want to make me a cup of coffee? <laughs> How many like spoonfuls do you put in? Two or three. Yeah. Oh, and right. then you put Jerry, them. Oh, listen, come on, we don't do this. Take I'm, this out. I'm from the Midlands. Yeah. We don't do this yeah. kind of stuff in the Midlands. I think you're making me a cup of coffee here, mate. And then water, boiled water. Come on, give it a use. You hold that for a second. Hold that for a second. Oh look, they got one of these fancy taps as well. There we go, we're golden. There you go. Now put back, yeah, the top and slowly. Slowly push it down, yeah. Push it down. Slowly. Not that slow though. <laughs> <laughs> and what, and then technique. it's good to go straight afterwards? You just pour away, yeah? No, oh, you wait a bit. It's too fancy yeah. for me, this, mate. Boom, let's let that for a second, be a yeah? strong coffee, by the way. I've been upset with what people have said about me when it was personal. I want to talk about guys in the right manner, but I have to analyze again. Lazy journalists will use what the pundit will say. Like, have your own questions. Thierry, I've got to say, I'm loving your pundit drill, right? Absolutely smashing it. But how difficult do you find it, having to sort of like criticize and critique players when you've been there yourself? You have to find the right balance. It's not easy at the beginning, especially if you still talk about players that you played with. Yeah. For example, for me, if I talk about Arsenal, but like I always say, you have to call a cat a cat. Like, I want to talk about guys in the right manner, but I have to analyse the game. Yeah, it is what it and is. And at the end of the day, nobody's above the game. Yeah. I don't like to debate. I don't know if you realise that. I don't like to debate. I don't like, I don't like to debate. I like to have discussions. So whenever there is a debate, what I call pub talk, I don't get in. Mm -hmm. Because you can have that, have that in any pub. Yeah. What I like to talk about is what people can't see, what we could see and try to explain it. Yeah, you've but got that little insight where you know you know the reasons why you might have missed, for example. Yeah, and you should, and I missed it, and I made mistakes, and you have to tell people something that they might not know or see or understand. When I say that, not having a go at anyone at home, I'm just saying we play at a certain level that people think sometimes that they know what it is because they kick the ball in the park. Uh -huh. 
It's not the same thing. No, no, no. You know how it is when people, when they said, for example, about you, they must have said, how can you not see that ball? Well, when Ronaldo or someone hit that ball, it's not John... The ball's moving. John mate. bent from, from <laughs> Ipswich. Down the park. Not, exactly. <laughs> the speed of that ball is not the same, and you know that. But on TV, it looks slow. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah. And the replay, even more slow. Whatever. So, trying to make people understand that. And it's not, it is not easy at the beginning because, especially now, lazy journalists, I'm not talking about everybody, will use what a pundit will say to go and speak to a boss. Yeah. Like, have your own questions. Like I said, what I said on TV, that's me. Yeah. Don't hide behind me yeah. to go and say, uh, 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 sorry, uh, Mr. Klopp, uh, uh, Jimmy Carragher said that you. Ask your own question. And criticism, like, I've been upset with what people have said about me when it was personal, uh -huh. never when it was about the game. But people don't call you when you praise them, right? Yeah. They only call you when, yeah. or when there is a problem. And it doesn't even make headlines. They just no, want sensationalism. It, it doesn't, and, and you understand that's how the work is. You just try to keep the right balance and not get too personal. It's tough for me when I do Arsenal because obviously, you know, after the game I get, I get emotional. But you need to make people understand that playing football at our level, it's not easy. Oh, no. Can we try this coffee, please? Do we have to? <laughs> right, come on, Terry, I'll go yours first, all right? There you go. Let's try it. Oh, that looks all right. That's a good colour. It does look all right, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a proper Americano in London. You don't I have milk or anything in it, no? Nothing. I'm gonna have to go in the fridge. I'm sorry, mate. I can't help you. I need some milk, all right? Oh, my! It's right there. Vision, goalkeeper. I in the fridge. It's right there. It's all right. It's right there. Where? Right in front of you. Oh yeah, here we go. Now Come you on. get it even more. Where was the goalie? <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> good. It's good. It's good. It's good. There we go. Beautiful. Come on, should we go and have Let's a little see. sit down outside? Okay. There we go. Let's see. Mm. You know what? It's not bad. Oh yeah, it's not bad, is it? I went to Monaco and I arrived there with like 13 players injured. They gave me two and a half months and I got the sack. Even when we won, we had fights in the dressing room. Even when we won, you know, I know how it feels when you stop. It's you die. Okay, TT. I can call you TT, can't I? You can. We're busy mates anyway now, so I can <laughs> call you that, it's fine. Um, so, assistant manager for Belgium. Yeah. Um, you've dipped your toe into being mm -hmm a fully-fledged manager before at Montreal. Is it something you can see yourself getting back involved with? Yeah, with the uh, right project. I uh, obviously have to be humble about it because I'm doing a job right now as an assistant coach with, uh, with Belgium. But we are talking about the future. One day, maybe, hopefully, if the project is right. You know, I went to Monaco and you guys wouldn't have known, but I arrived there with like 13 players injured. You arrived, they gave me two and a half months and, uh, and I got the sack. Yeah. And uh, finally, I saw uh, Mike Steelen and he, he told me, now you are a coach. As soon as I got the sack, I saw him actually at the Emirates and he told me, now you are a coach. Uh, then I went to Montreal um, and I came back because I didn't see my, my kids for a year, which was uh, tough. It was COVID time, crazy. We played our game, all our game away from home. You have to deal with the emotion of the players, the ego of the players, you know how it is. Mm -hmm. Not going back home, staying in the same place for four months. It was tough, but still. Call me crazy, yeah. but if there is an opportunity, <laughs> you know, and I'd have to assess it and see what's what. Um, yeah, I would love to. Think back to your playing career. Towards the end, was it something you always wanted to do? Or was it kind of, you retired and then it was like, actually, I might give this a go. I wasn't that guy, like, you know, I can't wait to stop and stuff like that. Like, there is an evolution. And you all know how it, you know, I know how it feels when you stop, it's you die. You need something, don't you? You die, no, you die because you, it's not something you can do again at that level I'm yeah. talking about. You, it's like a little death, right? My life is football. It's a state of mind for me. It's like I can't do without it. Like I need it. And so I didn't know in what shape or form I was going to come back into the game. But obviously the closest is to, is to manage. Mm -hmm. uh, sporting director or whatever it is, but managing was, was my thing when I started. I said, okay, Okay, now that's the next step, right? Because you, you want to stay involved in the game. Why upon the tree? So I need to be, to be, um, active. to be active yeah. and, and in the game because that's 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 what I like and that's that's my passion. And just think back to think back to the the Arsenal team you played and some of the legends, um, proper full-on professionals, full big big sort of egos, big guys, um, but they did it properly. 
Have you noticed the difference between the modern day player to what it was back then? Yes. You can't compare eras. You can't compare generations. You can't compare that. We didn't have screens. We didn't have social media. We don't have all of that. Mm. Like everything is now. People can talk directly. Players can talk directly to their to their fans and and answer to to anyone. Like we didn't have that pressure. You played in in also in my era. It's the same. Like my coach was like shut up and play. Yeah. When I was young. Like I couldn't challenge my coach. <laughs> yeah. It was like, you're late, you're not yeah. playing. Yeah. Now someone's arrived late, you're like, okay, I, don't, I can't like crush his ego. He goes to, to everything. Now you can't say to a player, play a certain way, he wants to know why. People will challenge you. Yeah. We live in a generation now where you need to give him an explanation of the why. Now when you give him an explanation, he understands. If I told you when you were a player, or guys when they were players, you kind of go, okay, I need you tomorrow to play high and wide when the ball is on that side. If you talk to a new player now, they look at you like this. When you show it, they yeah, go like, yeah, yeah. okay, I understand. And I'm like, I told you the exact same thing before. Yeah. But are we now a generation of screen and, and seeing, or can you visualize stuff? Like, for example, at the youth level, they had a rule when I was at Arsenal, it was, I think it was on the, on the 16, they had a rule. Don't quote me on that exactly, because I was doing the end of my badges that everyone has to play 45 minutes. Right. What about the guy that works hard then? And what about how do you motivate the guy that doesn't if he knows he's going to play 45 yeah. early doors? And I understand what they're trying to do. In our generation, you've been, you've been in big dressing rooms. And as you said, you mentioned the, 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 the team that I played for. Even when we won, we had fights in the dressing room. Even when we won. <laughs> so now I see guys like, hey, he got upset because, yeah, he got, he got upset because he wants to win. So you know when you said to me a minute ago, people say I'm crazy for wanting to get back into management? Yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's why. Yeah, but you know what? It's, it's, yeah, it is. It is not easy, but you have to understand that it's not the same generation. Like, I had to go and meet this, the, 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 the old generation when I was young. Now I'm old and I have to go and meet the young generation. You have to do that to them. Like, they skipped us. That's unfair. <laughs> I said it and I would say it loud and clear. I prefer my asses than my goals. Why? Because that's what separated me from the others. So when I was young, you know, you heard it, put it in the box. And I was like, but that's not me. Okay, I gotta make people understand that the nine is not only a goal scorer. How can I change the game? Thierry, so one of the Premier League's greatest ever strikers, okay? You've, you've seen them all, you've been there, you've done it, you've got all the records. Is this Erling Haaland guy, is he, is he just another striker or is he a bit of a new breed of striker? Is a new old school breed mm. of striker. Yeah. What he does is, it's a skill, it's a job, it's a profession. Like, he, the only thing he wants is to score goals. Yeah. And he does it to the T. Um, I said it. I said, I think in his time at Man City, he will, score, he will have a game with six goals. Oof. He will. With, with, with the amount of uh, chances that Man City does create. Yeah. And now he smells it. And when he's going to be good on free kicks and taking penalties, just add that in it. And the normal ball that will pass through and, and all of that. I think, I think he will. Will he reach a 50, 50, season, uh, 50 goal a season? Not in the league, but overall. overall. 50 plus, yeah, he will. He's an old school striker. I will compare him to a Shearer. I will compare him to, to, uh, to uh, Lineker. I will compare him to Gerd Müller. Mm. I will compare him to Paolo Rossi. I will compare him to all people in Zaghi. To the guys that you know, it's not normal that when the ball goes to the to the your winger, he turns his back to the game and he goes in the box. Normally, as a nine, you go and offer a solution. No, not him. <laughs> he goes and sprints in in the box. And by the way, this is what I love about Alan. He is not trying to do what he cannot do. Yeah, he knows his capabilities. I see a lot of strikers and I see a lot of players. Stay in your lane. Yeah. I don't want to see your weaknesses. We all know that if he goes on the left, if he goes on the right, if he starts to come in the middle and pass the ball, you're going to go, uh, not you. Stay in your lane. Get That's the, the box, first thing. Dog. Know what you're good at and above it, know what you're not good at. Do you know, you see that many goals that you scored this season where City have worked the ball behind the defence, cut it back and he's there waiting. Is that, is that a sort of a skill that you can teach or is that something that you're just built with? You, you, you've no, got it from day one. You need to have it after you make sure that you're better at it. But for example, I couldn't do that. I couldn't 
stay in the game and touch the ball five times. Is that a discipline? And, and still be focused yeah. to be ready to score. Me, you would have lost me. I would have battled with everybody. I would have argued with everybody. Like, give me the ball. I needed to touch the ball. <laughs> but that was me. You know, whether he's, if I was right or wrong, but that's him. And that's a skill. To be able to touch the ball five times per hour for some time, whatever. And the other day, I think he touched the ball five times and he scored two or whatever he did. I mean, it's, it's just stupid. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, it's the perfect combo. The way City creates and how he is, is the perfect combo. Yeah. What do you think is your, or was your biggest quality, your one biggest quality that just set you apart? I would say understanding that sharing is better than scoring. Uh -huh. I said it and I will say it loud and clear. I prefer my assists than my goals. Really? Why? Because that's what separated me from the others. Getting, uh, getting those assists, helping yeah, the team to yeah, win. Yeah, it was because I think my background, I played as a winger. It is hurtful when you go up and down, following old school, following the right back, up and down, taking the ball, breaking your neck to, to cross the ball for the striker in a six hour to, to tap it in. And he gets the prize. I'm, I'm like, wait, whoa, <laughs> hello. I'm like, uh, so I was like, okay, that's a skill, okay, to do that. Okay, how can I make people realize that you can do both? So yeah, then you have to do it. Yeah. So when I was young, you know, you've heard it. Put it in the box, striker, first post. Get it in the mixer. And I was like, <laughs> but that's not me. Yeah. But I couldn't say it because of what I said before. I couldn't say it. You said you said that you don't play. Or your coach was like, I said, first post run. So you're like, okay. But I wasn't. Then you could see my weaknesses, but I couldn't challenge my boss. Then George Weah, Ronaldo, Brazilian Ronaldo, and Romario. So I was watching those guys, and I'm like, boss, you're lying. Those guys step out of the box. Did you? Would you say that? Would you have yeah, to say to, that? Yeah, well, I was a bit like that. Earlier, early doors, I was like, boss, you're lying. You can score goals if you're not in the box. Because now I could, I had guys that I could say, it was like, yeah, but they're them. So I was like, okay, one day you will see. And then obviously you work and you fast forward and, and you can do it. But then suddenly now I'm like, how can I change the game? So I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, I gotta make people understand that the nine is not only a goal scorer. If you that be you, that's good. But he's not only a goal scorer. Can you bail your team out when they can't help you? That's how I judge a striker, mm -hmm. me, myself. Can you bail your team out when your team is struggling? Elite mentality, I love it. Can you, can you pick one Premier League goal that you've scored that stands out above the rest, your favourite? I've got one in my mind. I've got one in my in mind. In the Prem? Yeah. But I scored, you know what? I, I, I thought you were going to say I scored a lot of goals. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's not can, that. I, can I give you mine? Can I give you yeah, mine? Yeah, go on. So, Man United, Barthez in goal. Yeah. I back, knew you weren't to say that. The back to, but yeah. it's just you, you've got you've got your your French teammate Barthez in goal, and he's he's just baffled by how quickly you've managed to get the ball up, turn, like dip it over him, turn. You just know where the goal is. That's the beauty of it for me. You play at Ivory, right? So. People go and buy cameras and we have it all. The best camera you have is your, it's yours, your brain. You take picture mm -hmm. when you blink. That's why when you train at the stadium and you repeat, you know where you are. I knew where I was at Ivory. I knew. I just, I just knew. Yeah. Then after, if you talk about the goal, this is, this, is, uh, this is why I like a goal. I need to see that you thought about it before. And I scored goals where I had to react, right? Because I had to react. It's, it's a reaction. Great strikers cause great goal also when they have to think. This is why I, I separate great strikers and just an, a, a, a normal striker. When, when I think it's Jill Grimondi that gave me the ball. When Jim, Jill Grimondi gave me the ball, I was like, the ball was running. I'm like, I can't turn. So what's the next move, right? So I said, I'm gonna flick it. When I flicked it, I, got, I can't hit it hard because I'm falling. So I said, I'm just gonna guide it up. And he went in. And I tried so many stuff at Ivory where the ball went uh, in the car park and stuff like that, but there was a thought process into it. Then you need to be equipped to execute it. That's a yeah. different ball game. That's why you work. We're talking in split training. seconds here, by the way. Yeah, but that goes quick. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But I like, a, I, I like a thinker. And I used to 
love to think about what I was doing. It's, it's, it's vital because then I have an advantage already. I'm already equipped, I can execute, right? And I'm fast. And I think, so I'm always going to be ahead of you. Yeah. Oh, I've got goosebumps here, Thierry. That's incredible. It's, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> Centre back didn't want to come. And when they came, then you are in my garden. It's my mm. kingdom. When I'm there in my house, I'm not polite. I'm here to kill. You played in an era where some of the best centre backs this country has ever produced. You know, you've got your John Terry's, Rio Ferdinand, even people like Nemanja Vidic, Jamie Carragher. How would a Thierry Henry in his prime? fair in today's game when you've got the the big teams especially there they play sort of like full backs wingers who just get forward and leave a lot of space in behind well it's it, well the team that wants to play mm. the team wants to that wants to attack uh yeah I, I would have loved to play against those high lines first and foremost if you go back in my time they were like to kick you how do you deal with that? Was, it, was that something you kind of well, looked forward to? Well, you find a way. You find a way. You learn how to protect the ball because when you have Marcel de Sailly behind you, a real third in, or uh, uh, well, Martin played with me, thank God for that. Um, <laughs> but the rest, you can name them all. When I arrived in, in England, you know, the first five tackles, they were for free. Yeah. Elbow in your face. Now, that's a yellow. That's a yellow against right. me after five minutes. <laughs> Trouble. I would have enjoyed that, <laughs> but it is not my time. <laughs> Let's go back. No, you, you find a way. So my way was this. I learned how to play back to the game. So I was like, okay, how am I going to make sure that well, nobody's going to notice my weaknesses? I wasn't a Didi Drogba. Didi, Didi was outstanding at keeping the ball, shinting people. I wasn't a Shearer. Mm -hmm. I was not a Duncan Ferguson. I, was not, I, was not, I wasn't that. So I said, okay, I'm going to make my usual run from the middle to the left, more often than not. So now I could feel the, the you know, centre backs. They don't want to go there. Even if the right back is not there on TV, it looks like the right back didn't come back. Yeah. <laughs> this is why sometimes when I see that Trent Alexander Arnold is getting killed, sometimes also go and cover him. He can help out a bit. Step out. Yeah. That'd no, be no, nice. no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, you play with guys that will refuse to go out there because they knew yeah. they were going to get exposed, and on match of the day, they would have been. No, 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 oh, the right back, oh, my, my right back didn't cover, you know, so he's not there, he goes up all the time. So I know that centre back didn't want to come. And when they came, then you are in my garden. Yeah, here uh, we it's go. My, it's my mm. kingdom. When I was staying, not moving, then they're the king and I'm, I, I'm, I'm visiting. Yeah. Now come in, come, 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 come. Let's go there. Sometime I can come in your house, then. I might, I might do something, but I'm not in my house, I'll be polite. But when I'm there in my house, I'm not polite. I'm here to kill. Nice. So do you want to come or you don't want to come? That's on you. We'll, I'll meet you later on, maybe in a box or something. If you don't come, you let me carry momentum, problem. That's how, that's how I'm not saying it always worked. Understand me well. I'm just saying that was my, 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 my mindset. Whether I play against Desai or I play against Taggart or Matteliot at Leicester, it didn't matter. Big Jerry Tiger, I love it. I love you've just name checked Big what? Jerry Tiger. Yeah, those guys were rough. <laughs> Animals. But you know, people always ask me the, the, the toughest opponent and stuff like that. And I named one time Ledley King and people was like, oh, Jerry Henry said Ledley King was... I named, I named Ledley King and I named a lot of defenders. For me, the best defenders are the ones that don't tackle, mm -hmm. don't foul you, and, and yet they take the ball and they bring you somewhere where you, you're like, well, where's the goal? I'm, I'm already at the corner flag. Well, like Van Dyke used to do at one point where yeah. people couldn't understand anything that, you know, suddenly you're there. Instead of doing what you're supposed to do, he brought you somewhere where you, you and I played against guys like that. And, and, and those guys are good defenders because the, the, the power of defending is that. Mm. You're not here to intimidate someone. If you, in, in a real, it's like boxing, you hit, and you're supposed not to get hit. And, I, and, and it's a violent sport, right? Yeah, yeah. But you're supposed to hit and not get hit. Defenders that can take the ball away from me without me, I'm like, how? That's impressive. Um, Thierry, that was incredible. Um, your English, I think your English is better than mine, <laughs> honestly. I don't know. Well, you know what, it's funny that you're saying that because people take it for granted sometimes. You know what, sometimes I, I think in English though. Really? You don't French and then translate it? The other day I wasn't, 
I don't even know what I said on TV the other day in France. <laughs> I, I, I said something and I was like, did I just say an English word in speaking French? <laughs> like sometimes some people must be looking at me in France and go like, what is he on about this guy? <laughs> but it's true, I think in English, it's, it's, it's a weird, even books, I would rather read in English than in, than in French. Than in French. Uh, but don't get me wrong, hey, I'm proud, huh? I'm French, but I'm a Londoner. Mate, you're incredible. Um, I kept forgetting what questions I had to answer because you were talking so well. Um, did you enjoy the coffee though? Was the coffee decent? Come on. There you go. The coffee wasn't bad. It was That's why right, I left it? it there full. <laughs> it is genuinely full. <laughs> mine is gone. I've enjoyed mine. Thierry, you're the man. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you very it. Much. And the Cheers, coffee mate. was minging. Minging. It was minging, mate. <laughs> <laughs> And don't forget, you can watch all the Boxing Day fixtures live only on Prime Video. Oh, that's disgusting. That is rank. Ugh.